Hey everybody, it's me, Zach. This is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I am back again for another Amberlynn Read video, and this time I'm actually reacting to it. So I'm I'm back on schedule. I did just upload a video late last night, right as she uploaded this video. So make sure if you haven't gone and watched that video yet, that you go watch it because the reality is is that I'll probably post this more than or less than 24 hours after that one and sometimes when I do that people don't realize that I had also posted the one before. You know what I'm saying? So go watch that one and then come back and watch this one. It was me doing a recap of the hour long video she did where she discussed, I don't know, it was a Q&A. But one of the things that she discussed in there was that she took a visit to the lymphedema specialist. And because some people, because of when I posted, some people thought I was reacting to this video today. And so some people spoiled me that at least part of this video is about her visit to the lymphedema specialist. So I do know some of that, okay? <laughs> I am a little bit spoiled when I'm normally not and it's just because people thought that I was reacting to that and so they commented before they watched and listen, I'll take whatever comments you got. Okay, besties, I love the engagement. So no worries there for spoiling me before you watch the video. But I do just want to say that because I really do usually watch these things for the first time with you. But with all that being said, today's video that we're reacting to is called Why I Haven't Been Losing Weight, New Diagnosis, New Diet, New Weigh-In. New, 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 new. Okay, bestie. That would make sense that she's talking about the lymphedema specialist because she did hint in the video that I commented on yesterday that she went to the lymphedema specialist and learned all kinds of new things about her lymphedema and she had so much to share with us, things she was surprised about. So, I don't know, you know, I don't love talking about her weight, but at this point, it seems to be the thing she's talking about the most, and by weight, I mean health, but sometimes those things can mean the same thing, right? So, I don't like talking about any of it, but that seems to be the basis of her channel, so I'm gonna try to do it with the utmost respect that I can, and also keeping in mind that literally just in the video I was talking about yesterday, she's talked about how Trollin is a character, Trollin exists, and so, you know, we can take her about as seriously as she'll let us. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You feel me now, Mr. Krabs? Okay, good. Well, let's get to, let's get to. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So Hi. today is going to be me updating you because I saw the lymphedema specialist. Okay, work. Something <sighs> kind of shocking that I was not expecting. We're going to have a little let's like go, what Diva. I eat today moment mixed with a what I we're getting a what I eat in a day moment today too. Ah, uh, we are blessed on this. Well, she posted this on a Monday, but this is Tuesday. We are blessed on this Tuesday. So, it's going to be a mixture of a lot of things. So, let's get into it. So, let's first go. I'm going to start with the whole lymphedema thing. So, okay. very short backstory in 2019, I started forming this big fluid like ness on my leg. I don't really know how to explain it. Okay. I diagnosed myself with lymphedema and then whenever I would see a doctor okay. and I would say, yeah, I have lymphedema and they'd look at it and they wouldn't like say, oh no, that's not lymphedema. Like they would never like say, that's not what that is. They would just like go with it. But I never actually saw a lymphedema specialist sure, or a sure, doctor sure, sure, that sure. knew much about lymphedema. I at some point, and this is this could just be my my misremembrance, okay? But I thought she said that a doctor told her she had it once. But I guess that's neither here nor there. Like, I'm sure we're about to find out for sure from like an actual specialist that that is what it is. But I I don't know. Maybe I'm not remembering it correctly. I thought she did, but that's fine. No worries. That's just my my forgetfulness. Probably I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. I never did until recently. Oh my gosh, I finally did it. I prolonged it for long enough. I was just really nervous to go for some reason. I mean, I don't I don't know that any of us are remarkably surprised that it took you a long time to decide to do this. That's it seems to be a trend for most things related to your health, which like work medical anxiety is is real but i i seems pretty much par for the course for miss amberlyn reed and massively embarrassed and ashamed 
because I don't like showing my legs and I knew that was going to be obviously a big sure. portion of this visit is a Makes lot of sense. look and poke and prod in and stuff like that. So I finally said I am trying to get my health together. It's been about a year now that I have been following doctor's instructions. I have been advocating for myself and losing weight and... Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm like... What what doctor's instructions has she been following? I mean, not not to say that she's not going to the doctor. Obviously, she's been going to the doctor. But like regarding her weight and things like that, like what what doctor's directions has she been taking? Because the only thing I remember is that she she attended a outpatient rehab for her binge eating disorder and decided that it didn't work for her and she didn't like it. I mean, again, she also just said in the video I responded to yesterday that we don't see everything. We're not privy to every medical doctor visit, etc. So it might, maybe it's something she didn't tell us. Maybe it's something that happened off camera. It just feels like all this time Time that I should have been doing it my whole life, right. especially my adulthood life. I have Absolutely. put on so many things that in this last year it just felt super overwhelming but if it's like if I wouldn't have prolonged all these things then I okay. know this last year wouldn't have been so overwhelming if that makes sense so I want to say okay okay a plus for some self-awareness now turn that self-awareness into action love it love to see self-awareness love to see like some reflection on ways that we can change our behaviors in the future that this lymphedema specialist is more than that she also is a specialist in lipedema lipedema Okay. I don't really know how to pronounce it very I don't, well, but I, I need to learn. To be fair, I don't either, and I don't know if I know the distinction from lymphedema. And you'll know why. Um, this appointment was two hours long. Okay. And as soon as she saw me, even before I took my pants off, she knew exactly what it was. And then I had to obviously take off my clothing, and she really saw. I do have a little bit of lymphedema. I do. Okay. But what I'm actually experiencing is lipedema. It is a disease that not a lot of people have. Um, <laughs> I, I'm glad she's getting answers because, again, this is how the healthcare system works to some extent. Like, you do have to actually go see a professional to get diagnosed. I think that also this is why people encourage her not to self-diagnose herself. And if she really has just been sitting on this assuming she has lymphedema like she started this off with, it's frustrating that she held off on like seeing somebody to give her a proper diagnosis. You know, like she's been so upset lately about getting misdiagnosed with this, that, the other when going to the ER, when seeing her primary care physician, whoever, whatever it is. And in this case, if she had just, like, maybe gone sooner, she could have had a more accurate understanding of what it is. And it sounds like she understands that. I'm not not shaming her for that. It sounds like she has reflected and understands that's what she should have been doing. But it is frustrating and kind of sad to hear that she's put this off for so long and now she's getting a diagnosis she wasn't anticipating because she thought she knew what was going on with her body the best. Which, like... I think it's a balance, right? Like, I think sometimes we know and feel things in our body that are wrong or not working right. But to just, like, diagnose yourself and then and then find out much, much, much later that it was something else going on, that must be very frustrating. But more people have it than you think. Um, it's not something that people just go around knowing. Like, lymphedema is more common and more commonly talked about. But I have lipedema. This shocked me completely okay but everything she said made sense and it all came together because ever since i was a little girl i've always experienced bigger calves and bigger arms okay and it's like no matter what i ate no matter what i did like it was hard for me to lose weight it was super easy for me to gain you guys know that you guys have it's seen that like sure, when i was sure, doing sure. my series videos i was like weighing myself every day showing you guys what i ate i'll show my calories your series videos. Can we stop calling those a series? <laughs> they, they were they were just videos that you do every day with like a name attached to them. You were calling them something different, okay? But second of all, could you tell me also what this is? Like it would help to understand all of these things that you're saying right now if you told me what lipedema was. Because as somebody who is not an expert on lymphedema or lipedema or a medical expert in any kind of way, I just like simply don't know what it is. 
And I feel like you're trying to say like, oh, this explains all the things that have ever been wrong with me in my life. And I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There was a section where for a couple weeks I was eating below 2000 calories and I was not losing weight. And you guys were calling me a liar. You guys were saying that I was lying and I was binging off a camera. And I was so frustrated because I was weighing myself daily for that series as well. This isn't just happening during that series. This has happened for years I'm, now. That I'm aware. Around the same people eating the same things well, and having the same physical activity. And I do. I do recall she went and spent a weekend with Eric and Ricky. <laughs> she went and spent a weekend with Eric and Ricky during one of those series. Back when I think she was maybe still talking to them. She hasn't mentioned them in a very long time. She went there and, and when on her way back, she was like, I gained weight and it doesn't make any sense because I was eating the same exact things as Eric and Ricky and eating the same exact things as wifey. And it's just like, well, also, it's not, your confusion there is that like just one weekend changes everything when it's really like the summation of many days of many weekends and many days. So like... Yeah, Eric and Ricky, who don't eat like that normally every single day, probably aren't going to go gain 30 pounds after one weekend of, like, eating takeout and eating food and things like that, you know? I, I do think that your perception of how those things work is still a little off, girly. Like, I don't think you fully understand that that's just, like, not how things work. Like, it's the summation of a, a continued pattern of, like eating and your diet and things like that. I would either gain weight or stay the same weight while they'd be losing weight or stay well, their how, healthy size. And how, how do you know that they were losing weight? I mean, again, just from this example, did Eric and Ricky go home and be like, a girl, I just weighed myself and lost five pounds? I would think that's what happened. <laughs> what? Nobody understood me when I would say, I gain weight if I eat 2,400 calories. Like, no one believed me, and I was becoming frustrated with that because okay. it's like, a lot of you don't believe me when I say that I do gain weight by eating that amount. And well, a lot of people don't believe you because, as you acknowledged in yesterday's video, you, are a, you play a character, you do troll, and you also just lie in general. <laughs> general. But also, I still don't, you have still yet to explain how lipedema causes all of this. And I'm just saying, like, from a storytelling perspective, I feel like you're assuming people know what this is and how it's different from lymphedema. I, like, just have no idea. Like, I truly, I really am, I'm not, like, trolling or anything. I have no idea what lipedema is. And I, or why it would like impact her in this way or like make a difference on whether or not she ate 2000 calories or 2400 calories. You know what I'm saying? There was even a section of a time where I was eating like 1700 calories and I was still gaining weight every single day while Feline was doing the same not thing as me and losing weight. Not like she's already thin. So no. it just felt like I was broken, something like Not Feline, not comparing yourself to Feline. Uh, <laughs> I think she really needs to, like, think about the quote, comparison is the thief of joy, because she really, honestly, truly has in the past articulated, like, I, my body is different. I'm a different human than other people. So, yeah, Feline is a much more active human. You know, she's, like, going out and about doing things. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, like, sh her body is not going to respond to a diet in the same way that your body is responding to a diet. You know, it's more than just, like, what your body is consuming. That's a big part of it, for sure. But, like, your bodies are so different. Stop comparing yourself to Feline. And I was right. Something is wrong. The number one symptom of lipedema, lipedema... Girl... I know. <laughs> I, honestly, truly, I don't care how it's pronounced because, like I said, I don't even have a clue what it is. But, but it's it's wild to me that this was something you were just diagnosed with that, like, a doctor said out loud to you in a hospital room in a uh, doctor's office, and you don't know how to say it. But yet, yesterday's video, you were talking about how you. You sit there in doctor's offices until you absolutely understand every single thing that a person said to you, and now you don't know how to say this thing you were just diagnosed with. <laughs> like, 
I hate to say bestie, but it's not adding up. It's not. It truly isn't. No matter what diets you do, no matter how low of calories uh -huh. you gain weight, that is the number one symptom. Okay. The knowledge was overwhelming in this two hour session, which I have another appointment with her next month, which I'm already so excited for because Perfect. she's Work. teaching me so much and she made me feel so validated. She was like, okay, good. You have troubles losing weight, don't you? And I was like, yeah. She was like, even eating at a normal amount. And I was like, yeah, it's because of the disease. And okay. it just like really shocked me. And Feline like looked at me and was like, she has seen me through all of these struggles and it's just been rough, you guys. But I have a reason now. And now I understand that it's like, no matter what I do, I have something fighting against me. And that's the number one freaking symptom. It's just so frustrating. And it's also just so interesting though, because like, it certainly can be both. I'm sure it can be both, but like up until now, it was always like, oh, I binge eat, I binge eat, I binge eat. Like that's the problem. I have troubles with binging. Now it feels like she has like this new thing to cling on to. And it probably is both. Like I'm sure whatever this disease is, it doesn't make it easy to lose weight. But now it's like, oh, do we no longer, like, I, well, I'm curious, I guess. Like, I'm just curious where the, like, solving and resolving the binge eating disorder will come in from this. I hope that she can resolve both of them. And, and hopefully maybe this uh, lymphedema specialist can, you know, like, provide her with some resources and things that help that. Because I'm sure this person, this doctor, is also familiar with, like, losing weight and, and tools to lose weight and things like that. So hopefully... You know, this is it. I, <laughs> I, I, I hate to like giggle or laugh. It's, it's more out of just like, I don't know if this can be it when there's been so many other things or people who have tried to intervene and doctors who've tried to give advice and things like that. Like, I really would love for this to be like the wake up call. It's just, I think we all know at this point, like very hard to watch because nothing seems to be a wake up call for her. For so long, people didn't take me seriously. I would talk to you guys repeatedly and I'm just like, you guys, I promise, like I'm not binging off the camera. I'm showing you everything I'm eating. Uh -huh. But there is a diet for patients. Like, well, well. Also, though, there were times where you would say, oh, I wasn't binging off camera, and then you'd be like, well, that's not really the case. Again, which is why it's hard for people to believe you. I mean, I would like you to, like, reflect on why, like, all these statements where you're like, oh, people just don't believe me, don't believe me, and I'm so vindicated. Like, sure, yeah, for sure. I'm sure you personally feel validated, and that's probably what's most important. Like, you got to be confident in what you're bringing to the table and knowing yourself enough to know whether things are true or not. But it's just like, if you really do care about people believing you, then we got we to gotta start working up some trust. <laughs> and I'm not entirely sure. After I said that in yesterday's video, I was like, I don't even know what that would look like for Amberlynn, right? Like, I don't even know how at this point she could go about building up trust with the audience that watches her. But you gotta you gotta start somewhere. I, I don't know where to tell you to do that. Like me and for people with this disease, and it is keto or low carb. Oh! The specialist told me to stay below 50 grams. And oh. I am very, very upset with that. Oh, keto? Keto? <laughs> Keto! Y'all besties, I, listen, I've said this so many times on my channel, but if you're new, if you're new, I actually did keto for two years of my life. Um, it actually taught me a lot about, I, I'm not currently keto, I do eat carbs. Prior to doing it, I didn't know anything about macronutrients, I didn't understand the concepts of like how much protein I was eating, fat I was eating carbohydrates I was eating, and I personally learned a lot from it, but Amberlynn has historically hated 
keto, refused, that's like the one thing she's always refused to do on her channel. People have suggested it to her time and time again, and I actually truly do have a whole video, because there was some video she made where she talked about like all the reasons keto, she thought keto was bad, and I did a whole video responding to like the misinformation she was putting out about keto. You know, I don't think keto is for everybody, but I know so many people with various health issues like diabetes, uh, PCOS, things like that that have talked about how keto or a diet similar to keto like low carb etc has helped them resolve a lot of those issues because people don't realize like how much carbs and shit they're eating until they start trying to do something like that and then for me it led to me eating way more vegetables way more protein because I, I realized that prior to doing it my actual diet was literally just like pasta bread pizza <laughs> chips potatoes and so I was like oh you should probably make some adjustments moving forward and so now I'm at a, a whole different place in my life where like I eat all of those things I think in moderation except for while I was in Vegas in New Orleans these past two weeks but I just know she hates this because she has historically shat on keto on her channel on social media she's like refused to do it so i'm fascinated to see where this goes i don't agree with keto i know you I don't, don't agree with low carb you sure I don't. don't feel like it is a healthy way of living before okay. i get into that i do want to say well she she thinks her understanding and definition of keto is like people who eat like butter straight out of the tub and ba bacon for every meal. And there's certainly like extreme keto people that do that. But personally for me, and maybe this will come up, so maybe I should zip my lip and let her talk. But personally for me, I was eating lots of lean meats, like ground turkey, chicken breasts, things like that. And adding like a fat, like a healthy fat to it and eating it with like a starchy vegetable. So like, not a starchy vegetable, like broccoli. Is broccoli, well, I don't, I'm using words and it's early in the morning, so, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like, you don't have to eat a tub of butter every day <laughs> to be keto. Also gave me this like lymphatic massage. Ooh, and it hurt okay. so bad. So like the normal person, she told me it would feel really good, like you're enjoying it. But since I have lipedema, it freaking hurt. It hurts so bad. But it's something that she said that I need to try to do daily. Okay. Um, it's a lot of massaging near lymph nodes. Lymph nodes? <laughs> and that <laughs> so hurts quirky. so bad. Oh, my God. Um, but it's supposed to help move fluid throughout your body. So okay, you're work. retaining so much fluid. And Let's she was do like, it. do you ever gain weight while you go on car rides, even if they're just like an over an hour. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, lipedema. And I'm just like, everything is coming full circle. Like I knew I wasn't dumb. I knew I wasn't an idiot. I knew I wasn't making excuses. Well, maybe you're not dumb about this, but, <laughs> but bestie, we can talk about some other things. I knew something was off. And I finally have a diagnosis. I thought I was going in there to be told, yeah, you have lymphedema. This is what you could do for it. Uh huh. My whole world is kind of, kind of shook. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Um, you can actually. So, so interesting also that she's not upset about this being different than how she self-diagnosed herself. But will get upset when doctors in other situations learn new information and say, oh, what we thought you had was wrong. And now with this new information, what you really have going on is this. Like, very, very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, obviously it's okay for her to be wrong about her self-diagnosis because she's not a medical professional, but heaven forbid a medical professional get more information and give her an updated understanding of what's going on with her health. Actually have liposuction on certain parts. Um, if you have lipoedema, lipoedema, you guys, I promise, next video, I'm going to know exactly how to pronounce it. And, I think I would after right. seeing her. But it's like right. one of those things. It's like... Well, also, even if you weren't sure before you started this video, even if you didn't necessarily hear how she was pronouncing it in the doctor's office, why wouldn't you just look it up before this video? Like, this is this is where the mediocrity of your channel comes in. You're, you're so passionate about it. You could have looked this up prior to starting. I'm just saying. 
I am so bad at pronouncing certain words. You are. Like lymph Correct. nodes. Correct. Lymph nodes. I, I go back and forth between the two. I'm like, which one is it? I know it's one of them. I just don't know. But yeah, you can have liposuction. Um, okay, work. Sometimes that'll help and such. So that, that is something I can think about doing in the future. And she also said, when you do lose weight, do you notice it in your face more and not in your body? And I said, yeah. And she was like, because you don't have lipoedema in your face. And she was like, that's why your arms are bigger. That's why your legs are bigger. And I'm just like, wow. And she was like, this is a disease that progresses. It doesn't just stop. And everything was just like coming together for me. And I was like, wow. So you guys telling me, wow, her arms look so much bigger than years ago, or her legs look so much bigger than years ago. How is she actually losing weight? It's because of this disease. What? Like everything is just coming together and I'm so glad that I finally have an answer and I'm not just like a, like a freak show. Uh, listen, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments and I'll, I'll be happy to hear your feedback. But she has said all the, the, all the symptoms of this disease, but not explained what the disease is. Right? Am I, am I wrong about that? She said, oh, the, the, this thing that I've always been worried about. It's a symptom. It's a symptom. It's a symptom. But I'm still so confused on like what it is. I do slightly feel like one because it's like I'm never going to get rid of this. But what I can do to help it and to lose weight the best of my ability is low carb. And okay, well let's do it, girly. Below Fifty grams. Let's do it, girly. Carbs. And I've never believed in that diet. You guys know that I've been in... <laughs> I have shared that I do not believe you, in that you diet. You sure have. The diet. I did a mukbang where I was like, I'm doing low carb. And I had a freaking baked potato. Y'all. Yeah, that's not that's not low carb at all. You are you are correct. You are correct. But also... <laughs> also, like, what... Listen. At this point, what would it hurt to try? At this point, what... Would it hurt to try? You've now heard from a doctor that you could try it. Listen, I'm, again, not saying it's for everybody. It surely isn't. But I'm just saying, you've tried literally everything else. You've been willing to try literally everything else. What would it hurt to try? Like, truly. You all know I've never taken low carb seriously. I've never done you it. Sure never have it. Tried. That's one you diet I've never you ever sure done. You sure have not. Keto, low carb, no. But I'm not going to these specialists to just hear them tell me to do something. Okay, thank doing. you. I'm not getting these tests and I'm not seeing these doctors just for them to tell me something and okay. listen to them. Thank no. you. I'm going to better myself. Absolutely. So, Let's today do is it. actually day four of me being on low carb. And I'm actually doing it. Well, all right, girly. Let's get to, let's get the fuck to. Let's fucking go. I'm staying below 50 grams of carbs. I don't have to count calories. So that's an aspect I do enjoy. I don't have to count freaking calories. That is true. Like, especially when you first get started on keto, like people really suggest you focus less on the calories and more just like on the carbs, because that's going to help you stay satiated when you focus on like, hey, I just am going to eat when I'm hungry, but I'm not going to eat a lot of carbs. And then once you get further into it, or at least once I got further into it, I was like, okay, now I'm going to start paying attention to like how many calories I'm taking in every day and things like that. So that, that is true. Like, or at least from my experience that that is relatable. But I know the difference between eating like a crazy person okay. and eating like a normal person. So even though I don't count calories doesn't mean that I'm sitting here and binging. I haven't had like the urge to binge. If I ever get that urge, you know, I got me some pork rinds for a Ooh, salty crunch. So work. I wanted to show you guys. The number I of pork rinds I ate <laughs> prior to doing keto versus after. Prior to doing keto, I was like, that is the nastiest idea for a snack I've ever heard. After doing keto, I was like, mm, sign me up. <laughs> give, give me them good old pork skins. Mm, yum. I ate the first day on low carb. So I did film my meals. Let's so see I'm it. going to show those. I would for love you guys. to see them. So here is my first one. Alright, first meal. No Work. calorie counting, just low carb. We have bacon, eggs with a little bit of cheese. Okay. And cucumber. Now I'm gonna show you my second meal. So the next thing I'm eating is, what is this? just chicken, onion, and zucchini. Okay, I work. Have green onion and making me a little hungry, not gonna lie, it might be the first time that's ever happened on Amberlynn Reach channel. Just like regular white onion, 
Um, I just added some minced garlic, some pepper, and some soy sauce. I would love this with some rice, but... Uh, it'll be okay, oh, girly. rice for me. I guess I could have used, like, cauliflower rice. You could have. I don't have any. So maybe next time... Um, I'll add that to it. Just okay. Just add some, like, volume. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. third meal. That is also the nice thing about doing low carb. Granted, you do have to, to like, not go too crazy with it. But, like, things like broccoli, cauliflower, etc., they are, like, very low calorie, low carb for, like, a large amount of them. You know what I'm saying? Also, this is kind of making me miss low carb a little bit. Making <laughs> me miss keto a little bit. Honestly, I'm curious how long she keeps this up because if she keeps doing this, I might have to join her because I'm just like, all right, girly, okay, let's go. I've, <laughs> I've never literally been excited about a diet for Amberlynn ever. And I'm just like getting so excited about her eating low carb right now. So next meal, I'm eating okay. taco salad. Are those, those better be the Quest protein chips because otherwise, girly, why are we putting chips in this low carb bowl? So we have a lettuce ground turkey with some taco seasoning there is zucchini also just for more hidden vegetables sure we have some queso blanco okay salsa verde oh wait i think that might be a quest chip bag okay quest chips are lower carb and some regular honestly though my tip if you're if you're starting out keto don't go for all the like low carb uh knockoff versions of your favorite foods. I, I just like don't think that's helpful. Maybe after you've been doing it for a long time, but it's much easier to just like switch over, in my opinion, to eating lots of veggies and protein and adding in a fat source. Your salsa. And then for the chips, I found these protein chips that uh -huh. were the taco flavor. Yes, we have a fourth. So next Ooh, thing I we love Taco Bell fourth meal, although this is this is just a plate of meat. <laughs> this is just a plate of meat. I'm eating because I am hungry, I'm feeling a little snacky, but I'm also craving like protein, that type of vibe. So this is just some steak. Okay. That I cooked on uh, the stove, obviously. And literally <laughs> obviously, all I've put obviously. on this is some garlic salt and pepper. It smells amazing. So Those good. Those my meals for the day, but I did get snacky. So I didn't film my little snack moments, but I had green olives that were stuffed with garlic. I've mm. never had that before. I hate olives. It was so hate olives. freaking good. Not mine. Like, not my okay, thing. This is going to be like my go-to for sure. I mean, this isn't about me, but it's not my thing. And then I had pork rinds. I had um, like a spicy and hot pork rinds, but actually that very first day was 37 grams of carbs. Okay, and work, it was only diva. Grams of net carbs. So I'm not really sure. I'm like balancing. Let's fucking go. Carbs, net carbs. Obviously, by doing net carbs, you actually get to eat more carbs. But I'm. I don't know. I feel like that's cheating in a way. I mean, so if I, you talk to people who do keto, it's not cheating. Most people who do keto, I I think use net carbs. Although it's, I've been out of the game for a while, so maybe opinions about that have shifted. I've only been doing like like actual carbs, so I haven't really been paying attention to the net aspect. Okay. I will say I am a little bored. It's only day four and I am a little bored. Well, girl. a lot of meat, and that's coming from someone who does not like meat that much. True, so true, true, true. Really Doesn't like meat that much, but does frequently eat meat, just to be clear. It's, <laughs> it usually does eat meat in every meal. It's just usually not the only thing she's eating put myself in a different headspace. Um, I can't see myself doing keto slash low carb while being a vegetarian. I have looked up things. Are, you're, you're not a vegetarian though. <laughs> you're, since when were you a vegetarian? Why is that a concern all of a sudden? Are you serious? Also though, I could send her, I have a, a vegetarian keto cookbook cause I got it right around the time that that was one of the reasons I quit keto is because I decided to try to be a vegetarian for a year. And it is very hard. I will say much harder than when you're not a vegetarian and trying to do keto. But there are ways, but also you're not a vegetarian. Let's, let's just be very fucking clear. It's just, it seems almost impossible especially because so many vegetables have carbs and are starchy. Sure. So many fruits. It's just like, this seems like such a... 
I, it's a weird way to lose weight, but I do want to say. I, I refuse to listen to this because, girly, you weren't even really eating that many fruits and vegetables to begin with. You are not a vegetarian! Day one, I was 488.8, so I had uh -huh. gained more weight. I wasn't binging nothing. It was simply because my body does not lose weight like the normal. And okay, all I, right. I'm coming to accept that. And now I know what to do to try to fix that. And today, so after three days, um, I've done three full days of yeah, 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 yeah. And I weighed in today at 482.4. Okay. So that means I've Work. been 6.4 in just three days of Work. low carb. Let's, let's keep it going, girly. Honestly, truly, I've never been more excited. <laughs> Which is amazing. And she tried to explain to me that someone with lipidemia... <laughs> I'm just going to say lipedema because I feel like that's what it is. Bestie. She tried to explain to me that someone with lipedema... Turn off the camera and Google it. Just turn off the camera right now and, and take a look on the old Google. Dima could eat 1,500 calories of carbs and, you know, have fruits and have maybe some chips or, like, some whole grain bread and some brown rice and gain weight while... The next day, they could have 2,300 calories of a low-carb keto diet with less carbs, and they'll lose weight. Carbs is what is creating me to hold on to so much water, and... Carbs is what is creating me to hold on to so much water. What? <laughs> what was that sentence? What does that mean? To not heal from this. It's just... It's mind-blowing that... This is what I have to do to better myself. The very diet that I absolutely disagree with. Well, just, you, you've disagreed with diets before and yet you still did them and went back to them multiple times. So maybe it's time to give it a shot. Let's stick it out. Let's keep going. It's a lot of meat. It's a lot of cheese. You know, you have to have a lot of you, fat. You don't have to eat cheese, just to be clear. You can, you can eat keto and be lactose intolerant. I'm just saying, bestie. Because you're not getting in carbs. And I, I don't want to overdo it in fat because I do have gallstones. So it is a lot of, like, give and take, trying to okay. make it fit and do the what? right thing. Then talk to your doctor about that. D did you tell your doctor, hey, I have gallstones. I'm worried about the concept of keto because it's historically, stereotypically a lot of fat. Are there ways around that? You know. Which also has never stopped you from, like, ordering tons of takeout that has all kinds of fat in it, right? <laughs> like, has it stopped you from doing that, just to be clear? Like, last night for a snack, I literally melted a slice of pepper jack cheese on the stove. Uh-huh. Because I'm allowed to have that over having, like, a banana. It's a weird. It's, it's weird. You don't even like bananas! You, this is historically, she doesn't like bananas. Why the fuck do you care that you can't have a banana? It feels off, but I am peeing more now. Like, okay, I good. I pee much, but I'm getting rid of all this water and I'm, I'm peeing. People are like questioning, like, why don't you pee that often? Because my body holds on to this water because of lipedema. Okay. And I've noticed that I am so thirsty now which is freaking awesome because I am getting in so much more water than usual because normally, like, I'm holding on to so much water, I uh -huh. don't feel as thirsty, but now that I'm letting go of it, like, I'm supposed to, like, I'm able to, like, drink water like a normal person. Like, I feel like I'm drinking water all the time, but it's probably, like, a normal amount. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just not used to it, though. So... It's a lot of changes. It's weird. Like, I'm allowed to have ranch dressing. Like, ma'am. Okay. So, I've been having, like, last night I had the salad, which was so simple. It was just chicken, ranch, onion, lettuce, and some olives. And I was like, oh, yeah, and some shredded uh, cheese. And I'm like, this is what I'm allowed to eat. It's, like, shocking a little bit. It's just so wild to me. And I know this is not lost on y'all in the audience that <laughs> she is acting like, Oh, wow. Ranch on a salad. Like, that's so crazy. That's so bad for you. It's like, girl, regardless, we've watched you sit there every day and eat takeout for 10 days straight. Do you not remember that series you did where we watched you eat takeout every day? Like, it's wild to me that you're like, oh, all of that is chill, fine, good, cool, whatever. And now you're like, ugh. Heaven forbid I have a little bit of ranch on a salad full of vegetables 
and and lean protein. <laughs> like what? I, it makes no sense to me. And it's working. Like my body is letting go of the Good. things it usually holds on to while doing like a normal diet. And I know within the last year, I have lost almost 100 pounds. And she was honestly amazed. And she was like, have you noticed a stall? And I said, yeah, it's been bad. And she was like, now you're finally stuck in that spot where it's your lipedema stopping you and preventing okay. you from losing more weight. And she was just really proud that I already lost uh, some weight. So that meant a lot to me. To continue going and improving and losing weight, I have to follow the instructions. Then you better do it. I want to do them. You better fucking do it. I know that I've been told to do low carb before by professionals and I didn't do it. You absolutely didn't. But I I need to change. I need to fight for my life. And if this is what is going to help me live longer Uh and healthier and happier. Yeah. Then I'm going to do it. Let's do it. And yeah. So today will be day four. Um, I saw the lymphedema specialist on the 20th of October. My day one of low carb was on the 21st, and today is October 24th. A lot of people are wondering if we're like up to date on videos. Yes, we are. Yeah, it's been very confusing because you you stop putting dates on things, <laughs> and and it's hard to keep up with the timeline. But thanks for letting us know. I appreciate that update. It is the 24th of October's. So yeah, that is October's. Octobies, let's let's not do that again. Let's <laughs> let's not say that again. Cringe. I want to update for you guys. Like this is a low carb queen, a keto queen, saying below fifty grams of carbs. And I guess so today I've only had six grams. I've had six grams of carbs. Way to go, girly. Seven p.m. And I noticed you're doing, like, doing it. This like. I haven't ordered takeout not one time. Good. For a drink. I don't even what? drink diet soda no more. Be- I don't even drink diet soda no more. I will say diet soda was something I continued to drink while I was on keto. You can't take my diet soda away from me. <laughs> and, and you can certainly make it work. Uh, but also, where was I going to go with that? <laughs> I don't know. I got so distracted. Oh, the takeout thing again, again. That she's bringing up the takeout because there have been times where she's like, "I can diet with takeout," which like you probably can, but like she's so concerned about adding, sprinkling some cheese and and drizzling some ranch on a salad. Girl, makes no sense to me. Because she said, even though diet soda has zero carbs. Our body reacts to it I don't as care. if we are I don't having care. sugar and I don't, having carbs. I don't care. Because of the sweeteners in it. You can't, you can't, you'll pry that out of my cold, dead hands. I will not stop drinking my diet soda. Every time I bring it up, people are also always like, oh my God, the aspartame, you're going to die. I'm like, okay. And when I die, I'll have the diet soda in my hand. Sorry, not sorry. So I was like, ugh, I don't want to cheat myself. So cold turkey, I said bye bye soda. All right. So I well work. Water. I also won't. I also won't hate on her for stopping. Like good for you. Like you certainly don't have to drink diet soda. It's just something I like to enjoy every once in a while. Um, I don't know. It's just very big changes rather quickly. Sure, and sure, sure, sure. Been successful with it. It's so keep common. keep it up. Gotta say, Keep it up. we are not gonna lie. So anyways, I'm gonna end this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed my little update and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Bye. Okay, um, wow, honestly, truly the most optimistic I've been, but also I'm not really that optimistic because I'm like, I'm sure, like we haven't, we don't even know what's happening with Ozempic. Do y'all, do y'all, she's just like, stop mentioning it one day, you know? <laughs> like, I feel like in a week, People are going to be like, so how's low carb going? And she's just going to move on and keep on keeping on, you know? You feel me? So, anyways, but I, I'm excited because, like, I found it to be very helpful for me. And while I don't do it still today, although she's kind of inspiring me, Amber Lynn Reed is inspiring me. Uh, but while I don't do it today or anymore, I've, I've, I found it to be very helpful in understanding more about nutrition that I didn't know prior to, like, doing research about doing keto. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see how it goes. And if you want to go back and watch the video where I called her out for, like, spreading misinformation 
bonus information about keto, I'll leave it linked in a pinned comment along with yesterday's video in case you haven't seen that yet either. That's all I have time for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, follow me on all my social media, including Twitch, where I stream usually around 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday and Central Time, and my merch shop, and get a cameo, and my gaming channel, and whoever, whatever you might want from me. I had so much fun today. I hope you did too, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!